Danielle Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about mountain lions. I feel like the protocol of dealing with bears is pretty commonly known, but I realized on the CDT during my through hike in New Mexico that people don't really talk about mountain lion encounters as much. And the unfortunate part was that I realized that as I was staring face to face with a mountain lion on the trail. And I thought, you know, this really isn't a good time for it to dawn upon me that I don't really remember what I once read when I briefly skimmed through mountain lion encounters on the proper way to deal with seeing a mountain lion on trail. So I thought it would be a good topic to cover, so hopefully y'all don't find yourselves in the same situation. But it makes sense that we're not preached to very often about dealing with mountain lions on trail because really spotting a mountain lion on trail is a pretty rare occurrence. But it's kind of interesting that we don't see them more often because second to humans, mountain lions have the largest range of mammals in the Western Hemisphere. More specifically, mountain lions are found in the U.S. pretty much in any state west of the Mississippi, and they do have a small presence east of the Mississippi, but that's about half of the states in the U.S. that you could hike through and see a mountain lion. Mountain lion attacks that end in fatalities have been recorded in the U.S. since 1890. In the state of California since 1890, there have been six fatal mountain lion attacks, and actually there have kind of been eight because two of those was a child and an adult that were attacked at the same time, and they didn't die from the wounds of being attacked by the mountain lion, but they ended up dying of rabies later. So we'll go ahead and say eight for California. In Kentucky, there has been one. In New Mexico, there have been two. In Washington, there have been two. In Montana, there has been one. In Colorado, there have been two. And in Oregon, there has been one. And that one still might be up in the air. I'm not sure if the results were finally released. But apparently there was a woman who was hiking alone in Oregon last year in 2018. And that was the first known fatality by mountain lion in Oregon. So if you add all of those up, including the two that died from rabies, since 1890, there have been 17 attacks which led to death because of a mountain lion. And obviously I'm not trying to minimize the deaths of those people. I'm just saying that the likelihood of you being in a car wreck and dying on the way to a hack and trail is a lot greater than the chances of you being killed by a mountain lion if you actually make it there safely. Now, seven of those were children and they look small. They look more like prey for a mountain lion than an adult human. Of the 10 adults, the majority were either biking or running. So you've got that running, biking, you know, fast motion going by a mountain lion and it kind of triggers that attack instinct within them. Earlier in 2018, there were two guys in Washington that were biking and a mountain lion pounced on one of the guys and the friend that he was with started running to get away from the mountain lion who was attacking his friend and the mountain lion was again triggered you know that little instinct in them to pounce and the mountain lion went after him and ended up attacking him and killing him when the original guy he was attacking ended up living so just imagine your cat if you have one at home and imagine taking like a string and running it by that cat in front of it. And you know, a lot of those cats have that like pounce instinct. It's the same kind of thing for mountain lion. But although the risks of death are pretty small, of course nobody wants to be attacked by a mountain lion. So the best thing to do is to try to prevent that if you can. So the first thing is no biking or running. I'm just kidding, <laughs> but I mean, but kind of. From reading the history of the fatal attacks, I would say you are safer hacking than, than back in a running. But really the first thing is to just be aware of your surroundings. Mountain lions are pretty stealthy and I think it would be very easy to be stalked and not even realize it's happening, but it never hurts to kind of look around or if you stop to kind of listen, um, you know, just, just try to be as aware as you can, obviously, while you're in the woods. Next, hacking groups. The more you're in a group, the more you look less like lunch, the more it looks like the mountain lion's gonna have to fight more, you know, because there is a herd of, of humans instead of just one human alone. And then also when you're in groups, you're making noise and it becomes more apparent to a mountain lion like, hey, maybe this is not lunch. Maybe these are people and I don't really want to attack them. Also, you want to keep your dogs in close while you're hiking in mountain lion territory. Uh, I certainly don't want to lose a dog, but you know, having a dog leading ahead of you, you know, very well can bring a mountain lion in that's not even paying attention to you and it comes after your dog and then you end up encountering it because you're trying to save your dog, at least I would. Um, but you know, so you just 
try to keep your animals close to you so you don't end up in that situation. Now, if you prefer two-legged children to four-legged children, then you know treat your two-legged children the same. Make sure to keep them close at you at all times if they are small and you are in mountain lion territory. Especially be alert at dawn and dusk because that's when mountain lions are more active. And finally, kind of limit crouching and bending. I know for a through hike that's not really possible because when you take a break you want to sit down and when you're at a water source you know you're crouching down to scoop up water but again it's just all about trying to be aware and to keep that in your mind like, hey i might want to do a little spin and check things out before i crouch down to get some water so you do end up encountering a mountain lion though the first thing you want to do is try to stay calm next thing to remember is don't run because i know for a lot of folks that's like their first instinct they see this like monster of a creature and they're like oh my gosh you know i just want to get away and you run but again if you run that might trigger the attack instinct and then you end up dead while some people's first instinct might be to run other people's might be to approach the mountain lion so you definitely do not want to approach the mountain lion you really want to stand firm and stand your ground. And I found it interesting that they suggest that you maintain direct eye contact. Now with bears, that's a no-no, but with mountain lions, you are supposed to stare at them and you know make them realize like, I am standing my ground and I'm not afraid of you. It is suggested that you raise your voice and speak firmly. And if you have any children with you, you want to pick them up at that time, but certainly you don't want to bend over and crouch down like I mentioned before. You know, you kind of want to just pick them up calmly and get them close to you, but you don't want to make yourself look small in the process. Now, hopefully at this point, if you've seen one and you've done all these things, the mountain lion has realized like, hey, this isn't lunch. I want to get away from this person and they run along about their business. But if not, and they start being kind of aggressive, at that point, you want to show that you're big. You want to raise your arms out, lift up your trekking poles, open your coat, just whatever you have to do to appear big and like you don't want to be messed with and you're not food. If the mountain lion continues to be aggressive at that point, you want to maybe clap your hands or even pick up a rock or a stick and throw it in its general direction, not necessarily try to hit it, but if things continue to escalate and you have to hit the mountain lion with rocks and sticks and such, then go for it. If it comes to the point where the mountain lion attacks you and none of those other tactics worked, then at that point you have to fight for your life. It is not like with a grizzly bear where you play dead because they might be bluffing you or just trying to rough you up and see if you're a threat. With a mountain lion, if they're attacking you, chances are they want to kill you and eat you. So you fight with rocks, sticks, knives, whatever tool, weapon you have, bear spray, just anything to protect your life at that point. Now, I know it sounds completely insane to think of fighting a mountain lion, but if that's your only chance, you have to go for it. It kind of reminds me of like a Louis L'Amour book, like the Sackett's novels. I know in one of those, one of the Sackett's was fighting a mountain lion and won. And I thought, well, that sounds really like romantic or something. You know, it just doesn't sound um, reasonable like you could actually fight a mountain lion and, and kill it and win. But here in 2019 near Fort Collins, Colorado, there was a man who was running in the woods and he heard something behind him. And when he turned around and saw that it was a mountain lion, um, there is some conflicting story. I've seen some articles that it says that, you know, he tried to look big and all that and the mountain lion still attacked. And I've heard some say as soon as he turned and looked at the mountain lion, it attacked. But regardless, this man fought with everything he had and he ended up suffocating the mountain lion. Now, everyone's like well it was a juvenile and it was only 80 pounds but but this is like an 80 pound like vicious efficient stealthy animal that can just like you know end you and this man fought it with everything that he had and he ended up with some bites on his face and on his wrist i think but he lived and apparently he used his hands and arms and legs and and whatever he could um, but the mountain lion was there dead where he said that it would be if you're being attacked by a mountain lion know that there is hope because somebody has done it before now since my encounter in new mexico on the cdt i have played the situation back in my mind and wondered did i do the right thing is there something that i could have done differently or you know better and the point is I came out of it alive. I came out of it, you know, unscathed. The animal did not attack me or even really show any kind of aggression to me. Um, but you know, it's good to, to play things back and, and to know like, can we do better next time? And there really isn't a one size fits all for dealing with these animals because you kind of have to read them. I mean, they're not all the same, just like all humans are not the same. So basically what happened with me is I was going uphill for a stretch and I was really slow going up the hill, which is 
normal for me. I don't like uphills. But then on the downhill, I kind of started jogging. So I'm going a little bit faster to try to, you know, get somewhere at a certain time before they were serving food um, that evening. So it was like going to town day. So I'm kind of jogging down this hill and I went from full sun into the shade. So my eyes were trying to adjust. And next thing I know, I see this thing jump up off the trail and I see dust fly. And it took a second for me to realize, but I was like, holy crap, this is a mountain lion so i'm staring face to face with this thing and again going wait what did i what do i remember reading or hearing about how to handle a mountain lion encounter now i knew not to run and i did not run so that's good i tried to calm myself down but you could hear in the video that i captured of the experience that my breathing really got deeper and heavier and you know i was trying to calm myself down and take deep breaths i did kind of try to yell and make myself you know seem intimidating Going on, huh? but listening to the video it definitely was not very intimidating but at, at least i tried and then it occurred to me what if i blow my harmonica at the mountain line and i don't know why necessarily i think that my logic behind it was maybe this will be an unfamiliar noise like you know music or something that an animal generally doesn't make and so you know the mountain lion will be like oh this isn't my normal you know menu for lunch so maybe i should leave this thing alone but after i blew on it i thought oh my gosh what if i just sounded like a dying bird or a dying animal you know some kind of animal call um, which it was pretty horrible playing, but you know, I just started to kind of worry maybe that would have the reverse effect of what I wanted. But sure enough, the mountain lion just kind of got a little confused and finally seemed to, you know, step back a little bit and run off and decide that it did not want to fight me. So it all worked out, but I still don't really know if that was a great decision. You know, I'm certainly not encouraging other people to do that. Uh, and I do think that something I could have done better was maybe to continue to be a little bit louder and, um, maybe you know yell a little bit more make more human noise i did not wave my arms and try to look big but i guess my mindset was at this point the animal wasn't really showing any aggression so i just wanted to seem intimidating but at the same time i didn't want to seem like i was like trying to come at the mountain lion you know so i did stand my ground i did look directly at the mountain lion i did speak to it um so i i probably could have done some things better about trying to look a little bigger um, but it's it's really hard in the moment to gauge all of that and keep yourself calm So it is definitely something to think about while you're walking down the trail and try to practice in your mind What you would do what you would say and how you would react I think doing that mental exercise is a good idea I will include in the video description today some of the stories I was talking about about the two friends that were together and the man that fought so bravely the mountain lion in Colorado also link to the episode where I encountered the mountain lion and some other articles and things like that that y'all might find useful but if you're going to be hiking or backpacking in mountain lion country I think it is good to review some of this information and again do that little mental game with yourself to help prepare yourself in case you do encounter a mountain lion and that's all i have for y'all today if anybody out there has a story about encountering a mountain lion on trail or anywhere else for that matter i would love to hear about it and how you handled it and if you think you did a good job or could have done better it's always good to you know read what happens with other folks so you're just more aware and on a side note before i go if you like the content here on this channel and you are not subscribed yet be sure to remember to hit the subscribe button thank y'all so much for watching and we will see y'all next time